uh, Mr. Ray Sarlo. He's a senior director at Intel. He's been in numerous leadership positions for about 16 years there. So if you'll welcome Ray to the stage and give him a big round of applause. Thank you, Dwayne. So uh, I'm Ray Sardo, I'm with Intel Corporation. I'm the Director of Business Development for our Non-Volatile Memory Solutions Group. I've been with Intel for 16 years. Um, just started that position two years ago. Prior to that, I was in sales um, as a regional sales manager covering a team that touches all of our North America um, cloud service providers, so mainly data center focused. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here at the symposium, and uh, I, it's an honor uh, to get some of your time this morning to talk about something that Intel is very excited about, uh, in particular to discuss what we're doing uh, about re-optimizing the future of the data center storage uh, segment. So um, we're becoming a cloud-centric world, obviously. Uh, data is exploding. Um, there are 50 billion connected devices out there and uh, they're demanding fast, faster and smarter um, cloud services. Um, so there's a virtuous cycle um, that that develops and that is that the smarter the cloud, the uh, more appealing it is to end users. The more appealing it is in, to end users, it tends to draw more people to the cloud and with that, uh, more data. So this is a, uh, a data growth that's accelerating exponentially. In fact, a stat that I recently looked at suggested that 90% of the data we have today was generated in the last two years alone. So it's mind boggling. Um, in terms of uh, where that data is being generated, um, we're moving from a world that people generated data before, and they still are, to one that machines are generating more data. So for instance, going around this, uh, this cloud here, um, the typical person generates 1.5 gigabytes of data per day. Uh, pretty substantial, uh, and again, that's accumulating day to day. Almost nobody deletes anything. Um, from there, a smart hospital tends to generate about 3,000 gigabytes or three terabytes of data per day. Patient records, prescription formularies, et cetera, images. Um, a smart car, about four terabytes of data per day. Um, a, an airplane, uh, four, uh, 40 terabytes of data per day. Um, Obviously, that's pretty sophisticated. It has to uh, monitor things like weather, um, engine performance, diagnostics, et cetera, uh, very sophisticated. But what's amazing is what a smart uh, factory like those that are operated by GE and BMW, for instance, um, are generating today. One petabyte of data per day. It's amazing. And you could imagine, you know, what, the things that generate that data are very important. Um, simulation, design, manufacturing operations, Etc. All in the, you know, from a BMW standpoint, all in the name of safety, obviously, right? So pretty big uh, data um, uh, accumulation here around the world. In fact, you have to go no further than, you know, a good example, point of sales. Uh, Mickey Mouse over here is collecting all the data they can about what you're eating, uh, what you're buying at the Carnation Cafe. Are you eating the big chicken wing or the, the churros, etc. That's all important data. That data tells them daily, what they need to do next month, next year. It's a very, very lucrative thing. But the bottom line is we have to be able to figure out a way to cost effectively and efficiently collect that data, access that data, and analyze that data, or it's really not worth anything. So uh, this slide reads like a, a, a little bit of a love story. You know, data and CPU want to get closer together, but economics keep them apart. It's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet thing, but not really, it's more tech and boring. Um, so here, real quickly, let me tell you how I define these tiers, the cold, warm, and hot data. Hot data obviously needs to um, be fast and constant access to that data, uh, real-time analytics, machine learning. Uh, warm data are for workloads that uh, don't need real-time, they're more batch uh, related, and that scales um, with lower cost technology and cold data are data that are stored for long periods of time, as you can imagine, like a social media picture, something that you're gonna access once in a while, but you really want it to be there a year from now, four years from now, when you get a reminder that this is a, um, something that happened in the past, right? Uh, so from there, um, we talk about the distance from the CPU. Obviously, 
The closer we get to the CPU, the better, the lower the latency. Uh, but there are trade-offs, as you can see on the bottom of this. Um, as you uh, have more delay, the cost is lower. As you want something that's faster and closer to the CPU and has less delay, it's gonna cost more. So what I wanted to touch on are some recent uh, Intel storage innovations that have focused on expanding SSD usage from the traditional middle warm data tier into the cold data tier, which is focused on more cost-effective uh, storage, and then from the warm data tier into the hot data tier, which is focused more on performance, obviously, and speed. So uh, we believe we have some uh, leading and groundbreaking technology in both 3D NAND and Optane. Um, and that 3D NAND is mainly focused on boosting capacity and reducing cost, and Optane based on performance. Now, I'll stop there for one second, because many of you have probably heard of the brand or word Optane, but many of you probably have heard instead of 3D Crosspoint, right? So let me reconcile that for you real quick. 3D Crosspoint is the innovation in NAND, the medium itself, that was developed with Micron, Intel and Micron. So that's the median and the NAND. Optane is the brand of product that we have used for that 3D Crosspoint in terms of launching to uh, the public. It's our productization of that uh, innovation or that technology. So when I talk about um, Optane, it is really a product that uses 3D Crosspoint with our own drivers, firmware, et cetera. Um, so with uh, the advent of Optane, um, you're gonna see that we'll have products both in the SSD area and the, uh, the DIMM area. So um, that'll be NVDIMMs. Uh, those will be introduced in the client and data center and embedded spaces. So looking at the current technology, you can get appreciation for why the search for ideal memory um, has turned up short to date. So DRAM, uh, very fast, uh, but very expensive as well. And um, there's a limitation in terms of how much you can scale on a platform. Uh, NAND, on the other hand, uh, cost effective um, and uh, can grow in capacity but doesn't have the same performance as DRAM. So that's why we believe that um, Optane DIMMs and SSDs will give you the best of both worlds. So um, we're investing um, significantly in these two areas and in particular um, on 3D NAND, uh, we're investing in, um, I'm sorry. We're investing in uh, um, a, a NAND that is, again, cost-effective so that it allows us to move into a more cold storage environment and um, from an Optane standpoint, hotter, moving into the um, memory and, there we go, it's a little bit of a delay, I apologize, um, moving into the hot data tier um, and allows us to um, get closer and closer to DRAM-like performance um, and at the same time allow for a more cost-effective solution. Um, but to be absolutely clear here, um, we don't see these as just a memory investment. Intel is investing in memory as an adjacency. Um, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to uh, see any content or listen to our CEO speak at all, um, but he continually talks about over the last couple of months this virtuous cycle of growth. And that virtuous cycle of growth is a very simple concept. You have data center and you have everything else, all clients, um, IoT devices, mobile devices. Then in the center of that cycle, that cycle of growth is memory and FPGA, right? So very relevant to our core, core business. It's not just some uh, investment that we hope to do well and it is extremely essential to our business and our growth. And in fact, um, what I'll show you in a second in terms of investment in, in 3D NAND and Optane, will show you how serious we are, but from an FPGA standpoint, um, and I won't get into this in, uh, into the presentation today, but we just invested $16 billion in uh, procuring Altera, right? So we're serious about this. So our 3D NAND technology, um, in terms of our investment, uh, I'll start on the right side here uh, in Singapore. We've invested in um, 3D NAND capacity in Singapore and growing that uh, through our partnership with Micron. And our, uh, we've just recently invested um, billions of dollars, again, a very significant investment in Dalian, China, in a fab and retooling that fab completely to produce all 3D NAND. So between now and the end of 2017, we will increase our capacity to produce 3D NAND by 10X. So just in a short uh, five quarter period. 
Uh, that China, uh, Dalian China uh, factory is ramping at record pace and is producing high yields already. So we expect to see very, very healthy um, volumes of products out there uh, heading into 17. From a technology standpoint, um, our 3D NAND is based on floating gate technology, and that allows for zero periphery build around the architecture. It allows us 11% higher aerial density. And in our second generation 3D NAND, it'll allow for 40% less real estate on the die, on the package, I mean. Um, so what does that mean? The result is our first 3D NAND generation product will be very cost effective. Um, it'll actually be lower in cost than our current 2D NAND when it's at full yield. And our second gen C, uh, 3D NAND technology will actually be lower cost than that. And that's because of the real estate that we're able to save in that uh, second generation build. Intel Optane again. Um, there are three things that you want to remember about Intel Optane. It's, it's stackable, it's selector based, and it has a fast switching material. Um, it's groundbreaking in that sense. Um, from a stackability standpoint, we can uh, stack memory layers in a 3D manner, obviously, thus the name 3D, um, to further uh, increase density. Uh, from a selector-based standpoint, the memory cells in between um, the green and yellow there can be uh, accessed, written, or read by um, these varying voltages that are set by these bars that run across the top. Uh, those bars um, are uh, proprietary. They eliminate the need for transistors, which is not traditional, uh, but that obviously results in um, a much higher cost savings. Uh, in terms of performance, the switching material uh, that we use in between those bars uh, is combined with a low delay metal interconnect design. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, time went into developing that material in between 10 years, so to speak, for uh, Micron and Intel. Um, probably a little bit longer than that, but that's what we tout. A long time in the, in the making, very difficult to launch. Um, we have product coming out in 17 that hits the SSD um, segment again and DIMMs as well. So real quickly, just a comparison. When you're comparing this Optane technology to, let's say, an Intel high-performance, um, uh, high-endurance product like our uh, PCIe 3700 SSDs, uh, NVMe PCIe, uh, there's a 4x throughput advantage of Optane and a 10x latency advantage, not to mention a better quality of service. So this is significant product. So Moore's Law. I'm assuming most of you know what Moore's Law is, um, and, and uh, I'll do a quick refresher, and that is that um, Gordon Moore, who was a co-founder of Intel back in 1965, asserted that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit would double approximately every two years. So we've seen that hold for decades on most innovations in electronics, and memory capacity has followed pretty close to that as well. Um, so just walking you through here where we've had key bottlenecks in storage, um, and I'll walk you through a little bit of a chart and a timeline here, and what we've done to alleviate some of those bottlenecks. So what you'll see here is in 2008, 2009, um, there was a performance bottleneck with traditional hard drives, and we introduced SATA and uh, SAS SSDs to the market. Um, the importance was that these SSDs fit right into the hole. They fit into the, the slot that the hard drive was already uh, made for. So it was a uh, path of least resistance and a quick adoption. Um, once those SSDs were introduced, uh, we lowered latency and improved IOPS uh, over hard drives up to some of them up to a thousand times faster. Fast forward to 2012. Um, once we figured out that there was a bottleneck with the interface um, and that it was limiting the uh, sufficient utilization scalability of the product, uh, we created an open source and standard interface, uh, which was PCIe and over NVMe. Um, that interface was changed after the advent of SSDs because we wanted to make sure that there was penetration of that product in the market and that that change of interface was a scalable and efficient thing that we can put into the market. PCIe over NVMe enables lower latencies um, and it uh, speeds up applications, uh, application acceleration. I'll talk to that in a second and give you some examples. So fast forward to this year. Um, we're dealing with, and I mentioned a little bit of this when I touched on 3D NAND and 3D Optane, we're dealing with uh, a cost and density problem of 2D NAND, right? The industry as a whole is shifting from 2D NAND to 3D NAND. In fact, 
most of the, the players in the market are retooling factories as we speak. We had a little bit of a head start because to be honest with you and to be fair, we were late to the party. We're a little bit later with our 3D NAND um, and our 3D NAND products, but our first gen is as competent as their second and third gen, and our second gen we believe will be uh, a leader in that space. So um, when we did that, we moved, uh, again, all of, we shifted most of our manufacturing to 3D NAND and we are doing that this year. Um, we, the whole industry is doing that as well. If you look at Gartner, IDC, Forward Insights, what you'll see is they're predicting some tightness and potentially some insufficiency in terms of supply, um, at least tight supply for 2017. Most of that is not just due to exponential need for storage, that's one of the, one of the reasons. But the biggest reason is that most people are retooling and shifting from 2D NAND to 3D NAND because of the advantages. So we see a, um, a healthy outlook here at the end when we're looking at Optane technology out into the future um, to continue Moore's Law. We don't think there's any reason on the storage side, CPU side as well, we've touted that. We don't think it's dead, we think it still exists. It may be something that um, you see is faster certain years and faster in certain products 18 months to 24 months, 24 months to 25 months. But the point is that that philosophy and that law still applies. Um, so you might say, okay, so Intel's a CPU company. So why are we so factuated with um, solving bottlenecks in memory? Um, and I think it's because, you know, picture, I'll draw, a, a kind of ask you to visualize this. Picture that game, um, and I'll either date myself or relate to some people who have young kids here. Picture uh, being in an arcade, so that dates me already. Um, or picture being in your favorite Chuck E. Cheese with your little kid um, eating great pizza and playing a bunch of games. And you remember that whack-a-mole game where the, the heads pop up and you get this big mallet and you can hit the heck out of something that pops up. Every little boy, I'm sure, was infatuated with being able to hit something back then and, and be okay with it. Um, so in this case, we see storage as this gigantic mole that popped up and it was a little too hard to get back into that hole and we kept pounding it and pounding it for the last eight years or so, it was the bottleneck. It was one of the biggest bottlenecks to deal with. Well, I think now, as we move out of 16 into 17 and 18 with 3D NAND and Optane, we finally knocked that mole back into the box. Problem is, is in that game, others pop up. CPU, networking, wireless connectivity, et cetera, right? You knock one down, the next one comes up. Uh, sure, with CPU, um, we're investing in FPGA so that we can help accelerate the CPU or together they work better. Um, we can offload some of the, the non-critical components of that. Sure, with network uh, or networking, packet speed and advancements there in terms of speed of network, uh, totally in the works as well, sure. Um, same with wireless, 5G, right around the corner. And we'll need that because if we ever get into an autonomous car and we don't have 5G speed connection, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't work very well when you have a hiccup on the data being passed back and forth. So um, bottom line is I'm only addressing storage today, but we realize and we recognize, even the industry does in a whole, as a whole, that there will be bottlenecks all the time. And we rely on you to press us to innovate in all of those spaces. And you're gonna have to continue to do that even though storage may be one that we, one mole that we knock down into the box again. So let's look at uh, examples of why this storage innovation should matter to you. So in the enterprise use of uh, SSDs, we typically see, it's a generalization, but we typically see two specific applications of that. One is to accelerate existing applications, and the other is to modernize storage. Um, from an acceleration standpoint, uh, we see that there's a capability of consolidating servers while improving TCO. Uh, from a modernization standpoint, um, getting all-flash performance and agility and scalability without that all-flash uh, price, right? So um, most often when I talk to uh, customers, again, I'll generalize, but for the most part, it's accurate. Um, I'm talking to cloud service providers and comm service providers who have massive scale. They're tending to talk to us about acceleration. It's very important to them. TCO is king. You know, all else is secondary. When we talk to general enterprise customers that have private cloud or private uh, infrastructure deployments in their data center, we talk a bit more about modernization and modern storage. And that's because cost is important, but so is agility and scalability. That becomes as important. So um, examples of where we typically see the acceleration focus are applications that are in virtualization, database, and big data. Um, where we typically see modernization is 
um, converged compute and storage where we see hyper-converged architecture. So a couple, uh, couple examples here. So most of these uh, acceleration examples of applications, as you can see, have significant uh, benefits. But there are two things coupled together as we, uh, as we look at these benefits. Number one is we're moving from an Intel Xeon E5 V2, so Ivy Bridge, for those that understand our uh, code names, um, to a uh, Xeon E5 V3, which is Haswell, right? And an N minus one, let's say. So we're making that conversion, and we're moving from, um, and each of these is a little bit different, I'll explain, but we're moving from a uh, traditional storage, SAN storage environment to one that includes SSDs instead, okay? Um, in the first one, uh, that's a Microsoft Hyper-V virtualization instance that's running Microsoft SQL Server database and Microsoft Exchange VMs. Um, again, it's V2, version two, Ivy Bridge of, uh, of Xeon with uh, SAS JBOD. We move that to uh, uh, modern or um, Ivy Bridge from, to Haswell, I'm sorry, for Xeon and incorporated SSDs, SATA SSDs, in fact, and we're able to realize a 2x performance gain and a 1.6x server consolidation efficiency. Um, the second one is a MongoDB uh, database, uh, I'm sorry, a big data uh, build out, um, same thing. Um, but instead of doing that Xeon to Xeon and, and uh, SAS to SATA, we moved to NVMe in this one. So uh, what we found here was respect, uh, respectfully the uh, 5X and um, 4X server consolidation uh, gain. The third one being a Microsoft SQL database uh, instance. This one again um, goes from uh, Xeon N minus one to Xeon today and um, to SSDs that are NVMe PCIe based. 7X and 4X benefits, 7X performance, 4X uh, server consolidation, and it costs uh, a third less to do reports in this, uh, in this software. From a, a, a business SaaS analytics standpoint, here um, we had much more significant performance gains, and that's because the one other thing we changed here was we moved from a Xeon E5 to a Xeon E7, right, a scale up, uh, much more powerful um, uh, CPU. Uh, but same thing where we move from a SAS hard drive based deployment to a, uh, an NVMe based deployment. So as you can see here, 15, or I'm sorry, 14X performance gain, 6X server consolidation benefit. Pretty significant. Um, again, uh, I'll go back to the beginning of this foil, and that is this required two things. Not only refreshing your servers, which is important, refreshing your CPU, uh, but also moving from uh, hard drive or uh, SAS based um, deployment to an SSD-based SATA, or for the bigger gains, an NVMe-based solution. So modernization, I'll hit these three examples very quickly. Intel cache acceleration, the Nutanix um, hybrid appliance, and VMware uh, hyper-converged hyper vSAN. Um, all of these are pretty prevalent in any industry and in any um, vertical application. Um, in fact, with Intel cache acceleration, um, we have several customers where we've gone in and applied that to their Ceph deployment, for instance, used our Intel cache acceleration software, placed uh, um, Intel NVMe SSDs in front of that with uh, traditional hard drives, which the Nutanix uh, example is a good one there. It's a, an, it's a uh, hybrid appliance and uses all of those. And we were able to see twice the performance at half of the uh, OPEX um, with some of our uh, larger, larger scale uh, customers in many instances in the last six to nine months. Um, from a, uh, a virtual SAN standpoint here, VMware uh, vSAN, um, bottom line is we're able to extend this to mission critical uh, applications now, right? So what was traditionally um, left alone now is a fertile ground for us to be able to apply some of these models um, and either eliminate or stem um, traditional uh, SAN investments. So just like the last uh, foil or last slide, accelerating applications um, before was great. So moving, and moving from server generation to server generation or uh, um, CPU generation and accelerating applications with SSDs, great. But the next step to uh, uh, attaining higher and higher um, 
benefits and or acceleration um, has to do with uh, doing this virtually, right? So real quickly, uh, on that last one, the vSAN deployment, this is just a quick example. Uh, we were working with a leading retailer. Um, they were using a fiber channel SAN, servers, switches, routers, traditional storage before. We applied a hyper-converged uh, vSAN uh, model. We were able to eliminate most of that hardware there. Um, the problem was that there was a heavily virtualized environment to begin with for them. Um, the hybrid storage was not meeting their IT SLAs to their business units, so that became a problem. Um, and the all-flash SAN was not meeting their business objectives, which means it was costing more. Uh, what we ended up doing was looking at a VMware vSAN solution, Intel SSDs with NVMe, and uh, Intel networking, uh, NICs, and CPUs. Um, and, and as you can see here, we were able to achieve a 33, or 33 times higher performance output and an 80% lower cost TCO. So, I think here what I want to do is instill the importance of the storage evolution we've just talked about uh, and highlight real quickly the benefits you see here from the new products that we're introducing, 3D NAND and Optane products. Um, we believe the future's now. This is a big year heading into 17. 17 and 18 are going to represent the advent of um, almost everyone in the industry moving to 3D NAND, first of all. But we believe that there will be a lot of innovation similar to our Optane product. I think there will be people out there doing something to compete with that obviously, but we think that our technology is groundbreaking. So local SSD performance and latency depends heavily upon the interface you select. And we've put a lot of time into the standard interface, interface of NVMe, or PCIe over NVMe. Uh, we think it actually results in the best performance um, and uh, cost efficiency. Um, also, NVMe is industry standard. It works right out of the box with drivers from all the major operating systems. Um, NVMe delivers a performance you need, as I showed you in the uh, application acceleration examples. Um, and what it does is it sets the path for Optane, right? We need those interfaces in place and people familiar with those interfaces to be able to pull out and use and pull to life that new technology of Optane. The usage models haven't even been developed, right? It's exciting to think about what that technology can do when you look at the difference between what we have today in NAND and what that new technology provides. It's exciting for us, it's exciting for our customers. We can't get it out enough in a sample format for people to touch. And that's because it's a very difficult, difficult um, technology to develop and uh, we're moving as fast as we can. But as we meet with each customer, it just gets more and more exciting as to the ideas they have on how to use it and how to accelerate storage. So we believe we're poised, Intel is poised um, in this today and in the future because we have all the ingredients. We think that with all those ingredients, we're in a unique position to make them all work better together. So when you have a server platform or your client, the more Intel in there, the better it's gonna work together. We make sure of that, we optimize that. You're pairing SSDs, Intel SSDs with Intel CPUs, chipset, drivers, software, et cetera. You're gonna unleash uh, the potential of whatever you're using, whether it's a client or a server. So, um, I also want to make sure that uh, I invite you to attend the session this afternoon where we'll be talking more about Intel's data center products and strategy. Um, and I want to thank you again and ask you to enjoy the rest of your conference.